Bubble is a popular no-code site builder that makes it easy to design a high-quality website and app. Combined with tools like analytics, session replays, and feature flags, you can build the best site possible. This tutorial shows you how to set up post hog on your Bubble site for capturing events, session replays, and implementing feature flags. The very first thing you need to do is just go ahead and sign up and create a post hog account. I have already created for this tutorial a bubble site that just says bubble loves post hog with a sign up button. Now the very first thing that we need to do is go into post hog. Let's go down to settings and right here we have a web snippet that has a pretty long script. Let's go ahead and just copy this entire thing. Go back into bubble, click settings. And then let's go to scripts of meta tags and header and just paste this entire thing in. Now, once you paste that in, it's gonna have our API host and our API key. We can come up here and say main deploy to live where we could just add post hog. And then we can confirm. Now, if we go to the live site, it'll be our application live. And if we go back to post hog and we go to activities, we can see that if we reload, we have our bubble post hog view captured. And right here, you can see the page view with the URL screen library and time it was captured. Now, post hog captures a ton of different events. However, if you want to capture custom events, we need to create a bubble action to run JavaScript code. So let's go back into our bubble application. Let's go to plugins because to be able to capture our bubble actions, we need to install a new plugin called Toolbox. Now, once you're here, I already have it installed, but you can come up here and just say add plugin and then type in Toolbox and install it. And this will allow us to be able to use JavaScript and utility elements. Now let's come up to our workflow. I already have one workflow created, which is a button signup that is expecting a click. But we can come over here and just say click here to add an action. We will scroll down to plugins and say run JavaScript. Now, if we come into our script, we could paste in our window.posthog.capture. We could pass in the event name. You can make this whatever you would like. And after you type that in, we can go back and say deploy to live, where I'm going to pass in our JavaScript added. And then I'm going to click confirm. Then we can go to our live site. And here we can see our bubble post hog web application with our sign up button. And if we click sign up, I'm going to click it about five times. And now let's go back to post hog and go back into our activity. We can reload our activity list and we can see our event name was loaded five separate times. Now, next, we can add more functionality to our custom events. So let's go back and add some parameters into our custom events to be able to capture even more details about a user. To do this, we can go back into our bubble and inside our action, we can come over here. And instead of just having a static string of an event name, we can come over here in our post hog dot capture. We can instead say current app version. And here we can set current app version as app version in our parameter below. Now, if we go ahead and deploy live by adding our current live version, we can say confirmed. We will then be deployed to our new application where I'm just going to click sign up a couple of times. Let's go back into our activity and say reload where we can see current app version. And then when we go inside of it, we can see the property is live. So the next thing that we can do is add session replays. Session replays enable you to record and playback users interactions on your site. Now to enable it, we can go to our session replay, come up to our config and click record user sessions. Now, once this is enabled, user sessions will begin to appear inside our recent recordings. So if we go back into our application, I'm going to refresh, then I'm just going to kind of move my mouse around a little bit. 
And now if we go back into post hog, we might have to wait a little bit before they appear, but they will appear and they will have the recent recording. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video real quick so it is saved here. All right, so now that we're back, we could see that we have a new recording for the Coding with Roby's Bubbles app. And we can see the mouse movement that we just had of our last user interaction. So we're successfully being able to record a session by a user. And now the last thing we're going to show here is how to implement feature flags. Feature flags are useful for conditional showing or hiding of components based on a rollout percentage and properties. For example, we can use a flag to show or hide a button, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So if we go over here and say feature flags, we can create a feature flag. Here, I'm going to save this as show sign up button. I'm going to scroll down until we see the conditions set to batch all users. I'm going to roll this out to everyone, and then I'm going to click save. Now let's go back into our bubble application. Let's return to our editor where we're going to create a new event. Now this is going to be an event for when the page is loaded. We want to create a new plugin to run our JavaScript code where we could just add the find button with the text sign up. So we're going to create a new workflow, set a button for the text that says sign up, and then we're going to hide it if the post hog feature flag is enabled. So now if we go back over here and we say deploy it live, we can then type feature flag is implemented. We can say confirm, go to our live site. We could see that there is no sign up button and that's because the feature flag is removing it because it's finding the text and then removing it based on the JavaScript code and then aligning that with the feature flag in post hog. All right. Well, this is what we wanted to cover for Bubble, which is a great application to be able to create websites and web applications without having to code at all. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next.